Hi everyone, um, we're getting a lot of questions from our clients around Northern Ireland Protocol. Um, obviously, it's a, a bit of a hot subject at the moment in the media, and um, there's been, well, probably a bit more than teething issues around the subject. So I just thought I'd put this two minute video together to explain uh, what it is and what firms need to do. Obviously, it's a very complicated area. So uh, we really are asking firms that have individual uh, pain points around this subject to talk to us directly so we can understand your individual circumstances. So Northern Ireland Protocol, which has special provisions for Northern Ireland after Brexit, is in effect from January the 1st, 2021. There are new rules to move goods into, out of, through Northern Ireland. And if your company is involved, you will be required to have an XI URI number. A free trader support service, or TSS as it's more commonly known, was established to guide traders through the new rules and as a platform to complete the digital import declarations, which are now the requirement under the Northern Ireland Protocol. There's a link there um, for anybody that wants it and it's to explore that further. There's lots of information on that. Um, for goods moved from Great Britain to Northern Ireland, import duty is payable on goods at risk, and the risk being that they can be moved further into the EU. It is not payable, however, on goods that are not at risk, and there are two ways that goods are not at risk. This is where the applicable EU tariff is zero, including goods which originate in the UK, where you are able to claim a preferential rate of duty under the Trade Cooperation Agreement, or the goods centred into Northern Ireland for the purpose of sale to or final use by end consumers located in Northern Ireland and are bought by the UK scheme authorised importer. So goods are subject to processing and you'll need to make additional requirements under the UK trader scheme authorisation. And uh, you will need to keep supporting evidence here for uh, each consignment for up to five years for possible post importation audits and uh, the type of evidence to support a not at risk declaration can include commercial receipts and invoices, um, VAT invoice, commercial contracts and purchase orders, delivery receipts, consignment notes, proof of installation, electronic goods, and quite importantly, uh, proof that the goods comply with the rules of origin where necessary. Um, you might be able to claim for a waiver on, for duty on the goods you bring from Northern Ireland from uh, Great Britain, which might otherwise incur at-risk tariffs. So waivers are provided in the form of aid, and they are subject to strict rules as such. If you are eligible to claim a waiver, you must do this at the point of your import declaration is submitted and submit the customs duty waiver form after the first waiver is claimed. There is a link here as well with more information if you're interested in that. Um, it's a very complicated area and obviously that's just a two minute summary or a snapshot of, uh, of all the key areas and, and what firms need to do. We're happy to take individual circumstances as discussions um, offline um, and we very much encourage that being such a complicated area. Um, my contact details are here and look forward to hearing from you if you do have any further questions. Thanks a lot.